Hello there, and welcome here to what I'm going to tell you here. This today, while well, for quarantine, if you're wondering there, if you go across the border to the United States and you come back into Canada at this current time, you're going to you need a mandatory 14 day quarantine. Now, want to hear it now, that may sound wonderful. Well, if we quarantine you at a hotel, it's this, it's, it's a jail. The hotel room, they put you in a hotel room, but you can't leave a hotel room, you can't do anything. If you do, uh, no, that, you get, you get, then you end up that. Top of that, they give you the same meals you're going to get in a homeless shelter, which is now not all that trip of food. A garbage food, you got no right to treat it like a prisoner, like an inmate, and it really, really bring it like uh, being in a concentration camp, being in a German concentration camp after World War II. That's what it is. We have actually come to a point in our society where that is acceptable. With not, this is not even acceptable in our society in Canada. Right now, they're very unacceptable. If you want a human rights right, you know, what they've done, all the people who got, who were there, they look out for them. But what about people handicapped? They totally left us behind. We forgot about us. We out there, we got to do things today, and it's really hard for us to do. It's hard for me to get out and do stuff at time. Well, being told, oh, we got to wear PPE to go here. Oh, you gotta stand in long lines to get into a store and get a few little things. Oh, you spend all you spend more time online, more than online get in. And then when you get there, the item you got, everybody grabs it like once. Like they do it every two rounds and then, like this here, a for example. Like this here, every round, oh, and we got a cup and, oh no, sorry. Well, everybody grabs it, walk in, no cup, see? That how greedy people have gotten in during the quarantine issue. That how greedy people have gotten in a corner. It's greed. And you don't get in there right away. You're not going to get your stuff. If I don't get into to, uh, any place, I will not get my groceries. Sometimes I gone to a month or two of groceries because of the greedy. I gone, I had to get toilet paper. I couldn't get toilet paper because it's that bad. It couldn't get core rice. It couldn't get bread. Everybody buys this stuff like crazy. It's like wanting something, you can't get it. That's ridiculous. They've even gotten like worse and got very bad. Things are very bad here in Ontario. The worse than I've ever seen it before. I've never ever seen conditions this bad. I heard of America. America, so many poor in America face the same condition day to day out, whether they're corn or what or not. Here in Canada, it's bad. If you go, you want to say, I want to go, oh, I want to have a nice big holiday in Canada, I'm going to go and visit all the sites to see and all that. Well, you get to the border, and here we're at the border going, I'm sorry, but you must 14 day mandatory quarantine, then you can see the site. Well, you say, well, you're going to quarantine at this motel, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, you can't quarantine here. You have to quarantine at downtown Amelie, at Crown Plaza. And it's in and it must, it will take you there in, in a, in an unmarked vehicle. So it takes the first unmarked vehicle, you bring him in there, and all we, at that time, we treated to, to, uh, to, uh, rotten, bad food. They're, they're, uh, in the hotel, they're, Homeless people knock on the door, harassing them. They get exposure to the homeless population big time. On top of that, after they got an exposure to it, and when done one in 14 days up, they did this to do. I just want to get out of here, it's horrible. I don't want to speak at them. Well, we all went back to the US and whip back our point and take no even bother to in Canada because, because of that, you know. And that's how bad, you know, things have gotten in Canada. Now, why do truck drivers don't have to quarantine at 14 days every freaking time? And why do we have to? Why do I have to? That doesn't make sense. 
hard to wonder as a coronavirus as a bit of a lack. It seems to be every time when the United States come up to a big election, they start to um, to come up with something. Come up with SARS when uh, when they try to elect. I see him come up with something every freaking time. This time, they came up with something really mad in Cornwall. Right? Why? They want to, um, why? To decredit Donald Trump any way possible. Decredit so bad that people vote against him. We'll, 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 we'll vote Republican against him. Republican state, not PC. That's how I do to credit the PC party. Now the PC and the Republican do not get along in the state. In fact, that's a fact. They've been known for a long time. He's proven with, with Harry Clinton, Donald Trump, it's proven. Also, Donald Trump found out something, too, about the, um, he found, I know what, what you know down in the U.S.? make numbers look bad and people see it here in the news and they make it look bad and do people like oh well, mr mr um mr uh you know talk about mr ford we cannot afford doug ford basically we cannot afford doug ford well he sees that on news and believes it and we put that in effect and the numbers there in the u.s are not all the numbers what it is is in Florida, they took the, or somebody doing time in jail, person, individual doing a time in federal penitentiary, that individual goes into a federal pen, he contacts coronavirus. He get counted as uh, number of good contact. So 140 people in a population in a prison contact coronavirus. What do they do? The 140 or maybe 10 people outside of jail have it. Or 15 people have corn. Add on the, the whole entire population of jail on for outside. You can have one or thousand, six thousand cases within the state. Easy. And there are lots of governors doing that over there. Just to make a point. And I know, I found out about that. And that was because another trick the prisoner, another trick to use, where the state has a death sentence, for example, death by lethal injection. Well, what did he do? To take a death roll? To take the inmate to death roll, on death roll to die? Well, they don't give it, if they get coronavirus, they let the coronavirus kill them. So this way, the coronavirus will kill them dead on death roll. And so this way, they don't have to go and leave, administer lethal injection to kill them, get around that. So, a person died from coronavirus in that role, they know that that one less execution has to do with that role. If the person don't die from coronavirus, if they come back you to give lethal, get, go for lethal injection to die, he dies, yes? He will die that way, but. It saves the state a lot of money. Coronavirus right now saves the uh, federal penitentiary millions of dollars on on illegal drugs you have to buy. Otherwise, that the coronavirus do the work. That's what they're doing in prisons in the U.S. where they have a death sentence. They use coronavirus to kill the execu as the execution means. So that they don't give no treatment, so they their lungs are so good. And then when they can't breathe or can't move anymore, and then when they pass out, they croak over and die. And then they take the dead body and they, and they consider a marked off execution done, basically. So that's something they've been doing in the States. I mean, it has been done. So I pretty mean that the prison, that happened to prisoners in the States. And that's where you should add coronavirus to execute prisoners with your welfare. That's really stupid low. And right here in Canada, they took the handicapped people. He went to sound the handicap. They forgot about them. They're not helping them. Oh yeah, if I'm homeless out on the street, I get all the help I want. Because I'm homeless out here in the Canada street. I can't get the help. I mean, my God, what's going on here? Well, also homeless, you can't go homeless out, get clothes. 
So they're going to put your whole town they got a face to jail, and they face coffee guard in jail. So you're not going anywhere. Stop. You ain't going anywhere. At all. Stop. You, get, you are stuck in the hotel room with a bunch of other people. Might somebody have, might have a phone by. So you're extending a phone by greater that way. Because it's you know, not a good idea. So, <coughs> here's what I'm thinking about is this. Number one, that, you know, this is really bad. It's real bad for me. It's bad for Canada. So Canada's got to be a communist country, it seems. You know, and not a Canada I know, a Canada you know. Canada is a communist country. That's all there is to it. And I don't think, and top of that, things will never be the same again. Next year can be the same crap next year this year. What the sense he was looking forward to next year because 60 years old are going to have the same crap? What gives Canada? What gives the country? It's horrible. Canada became a, right now been downgraded be, to be you know, the worst place to the worst place to live. You know, honestly, I can go to state get more freedom state than get here. What we get here, nothing. Got no freedom anymore. Canada is not a free country. It is what the same, you know, in Hong Kong, China, they call it. You don't get freedom. It takes away. Canada, you know, if, you know, we don't get freedom. I ain't totally been cut off the U.S. now for almost all the time. I didn't want to get all my birth to Red Robin, and if I'm gonna get it, I mean, I mean, I mean, that over quarantine, I probably have to say no. What the sense of me getting a birth to a red one, I can't cross the border. Simple as that, you know. What's the sense of me having a family, I can't see them. It's ridiculous. Me, 48 corn, he's just not living. You know what? I feel like the walking dead here sometimes. It's just like I'm, I'm walking dead, that's what I feel like. I got no life, got no freedom. You can't live without your freedom. You can't live with being having an iron curtain on the border. You can't live like this. This is not living. This is just me trying to hang on to what I have. Trying to go forward. And hoping things get better, but I, I lost hope. Actually, yeah, I lost hope in things getting better. All I see is things getting worse. Not getting better. I see, well I see phase three coming along, yeah. Things are open, but then all of a sudden, I see up might maybe uh, it's that, uh, uh, thank God we don't get another upswing a spike in September case. I pray God we do not get a spike because we don't need another spike. We are already in Europe. They have zero cases. They went to phase three, and all of a sudden, they went they had to go back to phase, back to phase two, and now the spike, and then the one kind of Europe back to phase two. And I heard a story in um, another country where they had a, went to phase three, and they had a huge spike. And then all of a sudden, you went right back, you'll be locked down again. So, you know, this, I mean, this could very well happen here in Canada. You know, this happened. I, I'm praying God this do not happen in Canada. I pray God this do not ever happen here. Why? Because we don't need, one, one, we got a liquor. People wearing face recovery, that's great, but it's not freedom. We have to, I have to wear PPE every time I go. Is that freedom? No. You know that is? I don't call freedom. It's very disappointing. Because Canada is not a free country. And not the Canada I used to know two years ago. Is it Canada a country of disparity? Uh, Canada a country of disparity? No hope. No will to move forward. 
and it does not get any better, just getting worse day by day. Coronavirus restrictions, and I don't feel need for I'm not sick, but, but I'm suffering, you know, deep inside and hurting at all this. And it's hurting me inside. It's a hurt, that more, you know. And having not and through it, getting some back, it doesn't mean anything. Like that, the vote is not open, it means nothing. It means that you face it, can't account it, face it. You know, I can move to Hong Kong, want to account it, but I move there. Watch it out bother, working on, um, you know, um, living right about this kind of country. I mean, the only one place in Canada was considered a free zone, that's in Newfoundland, Labrador. And I don't want to go out there because just to get the way to get out of this mean, brutal mess we in, that I don't, it, not only the little virus is the country, it destroyed the country. Canada been destroyed by the coronavirus. It destroyed country, destroyed relation, destroyed boundaries, broke down, destroyed country. And that's not a way to live. It's very dishonorable. Canada not a place to grow a kid anymore. Canada not a place to go. I mean, I can think of this song, like on Terror a place to grow and a place to go. We call this land Ontario, un Ontario, Ontario. Well, yes, but it's not a place to grow. It affects with Kona. As you know, it's not a place to go. Uh, a place not to go. A place it's not in. It's not in Ontario, Ontario, Kona. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I think about. That's just how sick. When I think of a place to grow, and a place to go, place to stay, Ontario, Ontario. Now, look at this. It's not a place to grow. It's not a place to stay. It's a place of disparity. Of disparity. And, and, and not knowing what's going to happen day by day thinking that, you know, going might be, be forced to live like a communist country. That is not, you know, Canada, almost like if, I can just see it coming, us being, well, you know,